Hello, welcome to the Daily News Ukraine channel. Today is February 21 and our daily review of news about Ukraine. As many as 22 EU member states support the joint procurement of ammunition for Ukraine. That's according to Slovenia's STA news agency, Ukraineform reports. Slovenia is among the 22 EU countries that support joint EU procurement of ammunition for Ukraine, Foreign Minister Tanya Fajan said after Monday's meeting of EU foreign ministers in Brussels, the report reads. According to Fajan, the defense ministers of the EU member states will discuss establishing an EU purchase mechanism at an informal meeting in Stockholm in early March. France takes a comprehensive approach to providing military aid to Ukraine, and this approach involves supplying not only weapons, but also ammunition, as well as ensuring technical maintenance. France's ambassador to Ukraine Etienne de Ponsons said this in an interview with Ukraineform. The diplomat noted that there is a constant dialogue between Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky and French President Emmanuel Macron, including on the nature of aid provided by France. Emphasis is placed on the fact that this assistance has a specialized nature and meets Ukraine's needs. Based on this, we developed a number of criteria that we apply so that this assistance remains effective and at the same time does not weaken France's own security and defenses, he said. According to him, this dialogue between the two presidents emphasizes that the aid must be comprehensive. It is not just about the supply of equipment. It is clear to everyone that it is also necessary to supply ammunition and ensure technical maintenance, that is, there must be a comprehensive approach, de Ponson said. As an example of such an approach, he cited an agreement between France and Australia on the joint production of several thousand 155mm shells for Ukraine. I'd also like to emphasize the issue of maintaining the equipment we provide. Take the Caesar self-propelled guns, which have proven themselves well in battles. They also need repair and maintenance, so we ensure this, too, the diplomat said. He also noted the importance of various instruments, including financial ones, which have been created, in particular, the opening of a credit line currently worth 200 million euros. But I hope that soon this amount will be raised to 300 million euros. This is the tool that enables Ukraine to purchase French-made equipment, including the weapons it needs, the French ambassador said. Italian Prime Minister Georgia Maloney arrived in Kiev on Tuesday on her first visit to Ukraine. That's according to ANSA, Ukraineform reports. She will visit Bucha and Irpin and hold talks with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky in the afternoon. She is expected to stress to Zelensky that Italy's support for Kiev will be unwavering as long as she is in charge. Maloney has been supporting Ukraine since she took office in October 2022. Her government is providing humanitarian and military assistance to Ukraine. The country's government has recently approved the sixth aid package for Ukraine. On Monday, February 20, she met with Polish President Andrzej Duda in Warsaw. Photo, www.ansa.it Slovenian Foreign Minister Tanya Fajan presented at the EU Foreign Affairs Council on February 20 an initiative for an international treaty on cooperation in investigating war crimes in Ukraine. That's according to Euractiv, Ukraineform reports. This shows that Slovenia leads a really clear policy of investigating accountability, including when it comes to war crimes in Ukraine, Fajan said. According to her, 77 countries have already signed up for the initiative. The treaty would make it possible to cooperate in the prosecution and investigation of crimes against humanity, war crimes, other international crimes, and genocide. Read also, No Alternative to Special Tribunal for Russia's Crimes Zelensky A diplomatic conference is to be held in Ljubljana in May to debate the first major international treaty to set up a cooperation mechanism among law enforcement bodies of EU countries and non-EU countries. I have called on the ministers to attend the conference with their teams of criminal law experts, Fajan said. Slovenia has drawn up the treaty in cooperation with Belgium, the Netherlands, and three non-EU countries. Photo, Shutterstock, slash Alexandros Michaelidis.
Russian troops have attacked energy infrastructure in the Kherson region, leaving the Kherson suburb of Zymovnik and three settlements of the Bilazurka community without electricity supply. That's according to the Kherson Regional Military Administration, Ukrainform reports. Yesterday and tonight, the Russian occupiers shelled the energy infrastructure of the Kherson region, the report said. Due to damage to power lines, there is no power supply in the settlements of Kizimis, Belotinsk and Honcharn in the Bilazurka community. In total, 804 households remain without electricity. The nighttime enemy shelling also left the Kherson suburb of Zymovnik without power as 538 metering points were disconnected from the voltage. Read also, two killed as Russian troops shell Kherson region 58 times in past day according to the report, some 100 out of 228 settlements in the liberated areas of the Kherson region had electricity as of February 20. Earlier reports said that Russian troops attacked the Kherson region 58 times on February 20. The European Union extended for a year the restrictions imposed on Russia in response to the illegal recognition, occupation, or annexation by the Russian Federation of certain non-government-controlled areas of Ukraine. That's according to the decision published in the official EU journal, Ukrainform reports. On the basis of a review of decision, CFSP, 2022-266, and in view of the Russian Federation's continuing illegal actions against Ukraine, the restrictive measures should be renewed until February 24, 2024, the document reads. It is noted that the EU remains unwavering in its support for the sovereignty and territorial integrity of Ukraine within its internationally recognized borders and dedicated to the full implementation of the non-recognition policy in respect of Russia's illegal annexation. Read also, Burrell expects 10th round of sanctions against Russia to be approved this week. The Union does not recognize and continues to condemn the illegal annexation of Ukrainian territories by the Russian Federation as a violation of international law, reads the decision. As Ukraineform reported earlier, discussions continue in the European Union on introducing the 10th package of Russia sanctions. It could be approved later this week. Illegally mobilized residents of temporarily occupied Crimea are breaking Russia's military hardware in order not to participate in the war on Ukraine. That's according to the president's representation for Crimea, Ukrainform reports. According to information from open sources, illegally mobilized residents of occupied Crimea are breaking military equipment in order not to go to war against Ukraine, the report reads. Commenting on the public mood on the peninsula, the representation said that the families of illegally drafted men are appealing en masse to the Russian Ministry of Defense over rights violations. As noted, this is about commanders refusing to ensure timely rotations and vacations, while short-term leaves are offered for a $1,000 bribe. Read also, Russia preparing to massively mobilize full-time students intelligence Russia soldiers are beginning to speak out. A small interview appeared in open sources in which the contractor with the invasion force complained that almost a year into the special military operation no one from his company was given leave because they either do not live to see it or are in the hospital, added in the representation. As Ukraineform reported earlier, the occupiers started in Simferopol a massive campaign to collect blood due to significant war casualties. China's foreign minister Qin Gang says Beijing is deeply worried about the conflict in Ukraine spiraling out of control. Qin said this during a speech at the opening of the Lanting Forum, organized by China's foreign ministry in Beijing, Ukraineform reports with reference to CNN. China is deeply worried about the continuous escalation of the conflict and possibility of the situation spiraling out of control. We urge relevant countries to immediately stop fueling the fire blaming China, and hyping up the rhetoric today Ukraine, tomorrow Taiwan, the minister said. Read also, Zelensky on China's alleged arms supplies to Russia, we're not seeing this today, as CNN notes, Qin Gang's statement was made in the context of the visit of China's top diplomat Wang Yi to Moscow, scheduled for later this week, and against the background of statements by U.S. officials that Beijing is looking into the possibility of providing assistance to the Kremlin involving arms and munitions. On Monday, Wang Yi said China is ready to cooperate with other countries to achieve a ceasefire and lasting peace in Ukraine.
Read also, Kuleba, China's top diplomat, discuss initiatives aimed at restoring peace in Ukraine Beijing has repeatedly refused to directly condemn Russia over its invasion of Ukraine and has refrained from calling it a war. Instead, the Kremlin's term, special military operation, has been used. China has consistently laid the blame for the conflict on NATO and the United States. Large number of civilian casualties and damage to healthcare and educational facilities in Ukraine is caused by Russia's indiscriminate use of artillery and other weapons systems. That's according to an update by Britain's Ministry of Defense, referring to the country's intelligence, Ukraineform reports. It is noted that as of February 13, 2023, the Office of the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights, OHCHR, recorded 18,955 civilian casualties since the outset of Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine. Among them, 7,199 were killed and 11,756 were wounded. A total of 697 civilian casualties were recorded in January 2023. OHCHR said they believe the actual numbers are much higher. According to another independent assessment, more than 16,000 civilians are believed to have been killed. Read also, Russia preparing to massively mobilize full-time students' intelligence as of January 2023, violence continued along a 1,200 km long front line, but was focused mainly on Donetsk, Luhansk, and Zaporizhia regions. Throughout January, there was a very high intensity and worsening trend of damage being inflicted to both medical and educational facilities. According to British intelligence, these incidents and consequent civilian casualties are likely to be largely due to Russia's indiscriminate use of artillery and other area weapon systems. The previous update by British intelligence reported that Russia's military losses as a result of the ongoing offensive in the east, especially in Bakhmut and Volodar, remain high. Russian officials are bracing for another wave of military call-up actively looking into opportunities to massively mobilize students or higher educational facilities across the country. This was reported by the main intelligence directorate, GUR, of Ukraine's defense ministry, Ukraineform reports. According to the agency, Russia's authorities are already setting up so-called notification stations, which will provide assistance to draft offices in serving summonses to full-time students. The administrations of the Novosibirsk State Pedagogical University, Tomsk Polytechnic University, and Tomsk State Pedagogical University issued instructions to their structural divisions to assign a certain number of students and faculty to the said notification stations. The plan is to involve citizens not officially subject to mobilization. Read also, Russia unable to swiftly restore equipment damaged on battlefield ISW It has been established that at Tomsk Polytechnic University, students are being assigned without consent or even prior notice. Administration officials were appointed to manage the stations. It is important that no additional legal grounds are needed for the next wave of mobilization in Russia, since partial mobilization announced in September 2022 was never officially completed, the GUR noted. Intelligence officials assume that the mobilization will have been completed by April 1, the date marking the start of the spring conscription campaign. If necessary, military draft could be postponed. Read also, Britain at OSCE. Putin has limited options to sustain war on Ukraine as Ukraineform reported earlier. Russian invaders launched an overt mobilization campaign in the temporarily captured city of Mariupol, Donetsk region. Male residents who have already obtained a Russian passport are priority targets of the local military conscription office. Today we were talking about those news. Over 20 EU countries support joint ammunition purchases for Ukraine media. France's military assistance to Ukraine not limited to supply of equipment ambassador. Italian PM arrives in Ukraine. Slovenia initiates international treaty on Ukraine war crimes cooperation. Russian troops target energy infrastructure in Kherson region. EU extends Russia sanctions over seizure of Ukrainian territories. Crimeans breaking military equipment not to go to war against Ukraine. MFA China worried war in Ukraine spiraling out of control.
civilian casualties mostly related to indiscriminate shelling by Russia UK Intel. Russia preparing to massively mobilize full-time students' intelligence.